Brad the Guitar just here. It is time once again for Shit Post Friday. Hey y'all, it's Shit Post Friday. Hello, Phillies and fellers. Brad the Guitar just here with another episode of the Rootless Tootness Guitar Show on the interwebs. Shit Post Friday. This week in Shit Post Friday, I wanted to start out by reporting on this. This is. A little bit confusing. It says Gibson just launched its own online TV network, which I thought was kind of interesting. I had seen a video of theirs earlier today that was a uh, guitar collection by the guitarist from Ario Speedwagon, uh, Dave Amato, and uh, I watched this it. It good, good episode. Uh, in it, Dave Amato and everyone's favorite guitar punching bag, Mark Agnesi. Uh, went through his uh, really awesome collection of guitars. I, and then later on today, I saw this article and it said, um, that, yeah, Gibson launched its own online TV network, which would lead one to believe, you know, oh, Gibson, you know, they've set up their own network, like a streaming service or something. It's like a Netflix for guitarists, some shit. <laughs> but no, when you read this, it's like, oh, tune up and tune in. Gibson TV will run their new original series dedicated to all aspects of guitar and music culture. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife. I mean, this reads like a press release. Gibson has launched Gibson TV, an online television network. This dedicated to guitars and music culture. Hosted on YouTube. Excuse me? A baking powder? <laughs> it's hosted on YouTube. Oh, uh, you are so dumb. You are really dumb. And featuring all new series. <laughs> Gibson promises that it will break out of the gear demo, interview, and behind the scenes content trifecta to offer guitarists something new. Well, I think that latter part, you know, is something to be celebrated, but does that really mean that it warrants a whole relaunch of their presence on YouTube you know because essentially that's all they've done they've rebranded their YouTube channel it used to be what Gibson guitars and now it's been rebranded as Gibson TV and they're trying to roll it out as if it's some big new thing when it's really it's just it's just a continuation of the exact same channel if you go to the if you actually click on the the channel uh, it's the same one that they had before, the one with, you know, a little over 100,000 subscribers, about 141,000 subscribers right now. And it's got all the same content that they always had, uh, except a couple days ago, they, they like, loaded a bunch of new stuff on there. So they, they uploaded, on the same day, they posted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine videos. No. 10, 11, 12, 13 videos on the same day. 13 videos on the same day. I mean, this really, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I do know who's running the show over there. But at, but you got to know better than this. You know, I think it's, I guess it's Mark. You know, you're in, kind of in charge of the outreach side of things. And I applaud you for, you know, if you're, if you're breaking out and you're getting into different stuff, that's awesome because I mean it's like you know so much of the guitar world is full of stale shit we see it again and again that's why you hardly ever even see me play guitar on this show because it's like you know I mean everybody plays guitar on their show and it's just like yeah it's a guitar channel but I'd rather just kind of focus on some weird ass news that's going on in the guitar world or whatever but that's kind of my bag but I, I get where you're going with this you're wanting to do different stuff and in the video with uh, Dave Amato, he actually, you know, they go not only into their Gips, his Gibson guitars, but reluctantly, it's, it appeared, they kind of ventured off into some of his Fenders as well and started pulling out some 50 Strats and stuff, you know, to look at, even though it's a Gibson channel. Okay, I know I work for Gibson now, but I, 58 Desert Sand Strat and 50 Broadcaster. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't very... look at that. <laughs> Get out of there. Can we pull some of these out? I gotta see some Fender guitars here. So, I mean, I'm sure, you know, Gibson's shareholders are going to adore that idea, but, <laughs> you know, if you could get away with it, that's great, because it is going to keep the, keep it from getting stale, but at the same time, if you're releasing 13 videos on the same day, you've got to know better than that, really. I mean, there's, you guys have got 141,000 subscribers, but there's only two of these videos that have achieved anything approaching a decent, you know, number of views in the two days that you've had them up, the Dave Amato uh, collection video and also uh, the episode one of the Gibson guitar making process. 
which got 21,000 views. So you have 40,000 views and 21,000 views on those two videos, but the rest of these are like 1.4 thousand views, 528 views, 4.7K views, you know, 1.4K, 2.4, 2.6, 2.3. I mean, you can't run a channel like that. You're just basically wasting content. And I will, I'll give this a free advice to everyone else who's watching this. If you have a YouTube channel, this is one of the things you'll find out really quickly. If you don't post a lot of videos for like, you know, a month or more, and then you just flood your channel with like 13 videos in a row on the same day, you know, you're going to get dinged bigger than shit for that. The algorithm does not like that. Uh, because usually what it'll do is pick maybe one or two of your videos to kind of promote. And that's like your new one maybe, your newest video, and maybe like one of your old catalog videos that did well in the past. You know, if you're lucky, you'll get a couple of videos that it'll kind of push, you know, out there to get seen at any one given moment. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're doing really, really well, you might get three or four. Um, but that's about it. You know, that that's really good for YouTube. Uh, but, man, if you do this, if you kind of just load them on there all at once, that's not a good strategy, and you're already off to kind of a rocky start. And this whole thing about rebranding it and then sending out a press release that just gets posted by, you know, Guitar World. Of course, they're just going to post it. You're probably their biggest advertiser, but... Uh, you know, they just kind of post your press release, basically, you know, oh yeah, it's brand new network, tele online television network from Gibson. <laughs> and then it's just your YouTube channel. I guess, okay, this is the Guitologist Online Television Network. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> just silly. It's just silly. I, I get why you would want to rebrand. Re I mean, you've gone through some rocky times. Uh, what was it, maybe a month or two ago, probably about two months ago now, or maybe even three, I don't know, time flies. But uh, a few months back, you know, I reported actually on uh, <clears throat> a few days there where Gibson actually had removed all of their videos on their entire channel, and it led to some speculation, well, what's going on? Are they, uh, you know, has uh, Mark Agnesi quit? Are they going to, you know, re-upload all this stuff to, to their website, which was what I kind of speculated, and thought, well, maybe that's the case. Maybe they're pulling all this stuff down, they're going to sort out the best of it, and then put it on their website and have, like, a video thing on their website, you know, drive people over there instead. Maybe that's their thinking, which didn't make any sense, but... But maybe that was kind of a portend of things to come. Maybe that was kind of their beta testing or something, that they were, they were doing some kind of testing to see what they wanted to do. Maybe they were playing with the, uh playing with the channel, but you know, settings or something, and just screwed up. But yeah, I just thought this was really interesting. Gibson TV, guitars, music, culture. So apparently Mark Agnesi is going to do more, um, maybe traveling to different places to try to see, you know, get out in the world more and see more of guitar culture. Um, but I mean, you know, if he does too many videos where he's feature heavily featuring Fender guitars, I don't, I don't know if that's like I said, I don't know if that's going to go over very well with the shareholders. Now that was the video that did the best out of this new crop of videos, so that does tell you something about what the guitar community wants to see. It wants to see a lot of different things. Uh, we get bored really easily, I think, and uh, you know, if you just flood. A whole bunch of the same crap out you know no, nobody's gonna watch it and if you do 13 videos on the same day no nobody's definitely gonna watch it so free advice <laughs> don't do that <laughs> I thought this was interesting too speaking of bad publicity and image makeovers check this out so rage against the machine you know the perennial you know fuck you I won't do what you tell me basically communists always bashing capitalism always bashing the you know the cops D and don't get me wrong I like rage against the machines music uh, really groovy awesome stuff so you know I separate their music from their ideology in my mind and I can listen to their music without getting pissed off at their ideology but I do think Tom Morello is a bit of a jackass and I do think he's a bit of a blowhard yeah just, I mean he's obviously a communist he's he's pretty much open about all that want to take down capitalism and all this shit uh, it's really trendy right now especially with the youngsters you know they all want to take down capitalism the big bad bully that has you know risen people out of poverty you know for the past hundred years you know let's just get rid of that and go to something that Stalin had a great fucking idea <sighs> boy
That escalated quickly. Anyway, Tom Morello responds to backlash for Rage Against Machine headlining Coachella. What's funny about it is, uh, <laughs> so now they're headlining Coachella and some people have taken to the web to point out that the ticket prices for Coachella Festival start at 500 bucks. These people are all pointing out, just FYI, Coachella ticks start at around $500 and skyrocket from there. There will be no revolution at this festival. This is a festival for people that can afford it. <laughs> and they're right, you know? I mean, this is perfectly valid. This is a perfectly valid criticism. You're going to go to Coachella Festival and basically play for all the, uh, uh, the upper middle class white kids, you know, who can afford to travel there and lo uh, lodge there for a whole weekend and spend over $500 for tickets, you know. And you know who knows what they are for like VIP passes, and you know you're gonna you're gonna court all this money, and uh, at the same time you're you know fuck you and won't do what you tell me. Power to the people, communism. You posers, you are a fucking poser. This is what I hate about some some musicians, man. It's just like they're more interested in how they appear to people or this bullshit that they say rather than, you know, music anymore. It's like they become this parody of themselves. And here he is, you know, going around wearing a fucking Antifa scarf around his neck and shit, you know. And, I mean, he's got... It's just ridiculous. But then, also, what's really interesting, to add insult to injury here on the Tom Morello front, he's reportedly releasing a signature soul power guitar with Fender. So he's teaming up with Fender now, too, to release his own signature soul power guitar so all the little college kids now they can get their own tom morello signature guitar and just rage in their own bedrooms <laughs> rage against the capitalist machine it's funny too i saw uh where tom morello was it him uh, those master classes you know those ma some of those look really cool uh there's several of them that like uh steve martin master class you know some sometimes you'll see ads for those uh, if you're surfing the web like i see them on facebook i think and uh, also on YouTube, um, but he has one apparently too, and it's like him talking about what was it? Oh, I didn't like my teachers. I didn't like my counselors. I didn't like my principals or the cops. I didn't like you know. He's like basically touting his his own you know power to the people street cred like right up front. It's like come come to my master class where I guess I'm gonna teach you how to be a fucking uh, disaffected youth at the age of like 50. It's just come on. Take that shit and go somewhere else with it. The 100 best bass players of all time. So basically, this is all the bass players. <laughs> just, this is all the bass players of the world. You're just organized in order. So if you play bass, you're on the list somewhere. You just gotta find yourself. <laughs> bass, bass players just get no love at all. <laughs> But that's kind of a good thing. You guys will never be out, out of a gig, you know? I mean, if, if you're half-decent bass player, you'd have no excuse to really be out of a gig. I reported a couple weeks back that John Frusciani had uh, rejoined the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, now they have officially announced they're going to make a new album with John Frusciani, which I had pretty much surmised. You know, it would be really neat if they returned to the, you know, Californication sound uh, or the, you know, Red Hot, or the Blood Sugar Sex, Sex Magic kind of sound, you know, that that really uh, made them famous in the 90s. Other guitar news, I thought this was kind of interesting. I've reported in the past also on the most expensive guitars of all time. And Bob Marley's Washburn guitar was on that list. And now the government of Jamaica has declared that guitar, uh, which, is one of the, which, which is one of the most valuable guitars in history at $1.2 million, to be a national treasure. <laughs> so I just thought that was really interesting. It's like, what does that mean exactly? Like they can declare something a national treasure. Is that like in the same way that Britain like declares, you know, ancient Saxon gold like national treasure? Is that like they can confiscate it or something? And that would be interesting to find out. Like can it can it leave the country? <laughs> Or where is it? I'm not even sure if it's in the country of Jamaica even now, or who owns it. I'm not sure. But uh, I just thought that phrase was a little bit, little bit weird. But that's something definitely also to to think about. Like if you live in a country that 
is prone to do stuff like that, like confiscate people's wealth. Like if they have a track record of doing that, you definitely don't want to take your guitars or anything of real value there, especially if you're a real high-end guitar collector. Don't move a place like that. They might just declare it a national treasure and steal all your shit. <laughs> In other news, uh, well, this article I thought was kind of interesting. Seven accidental mistakes not edited out of songs. It's interesting to me that, um, first of all, in this day and age, at least, with you know Pro Tools editing, with you have you have such powerful uh, editing software and stuff. Now it's like there's almost there's almost no mistakes to be made anymore. You know, you can you can slap everything to a grid uh, to a click track. You could even just have somebody hit two drums and then copy and paste those and use those as samples. Um, but I just thought it was interesting because most of this stuff is old. You know, we've got Led Zeppelin, Black Country Woman here off Physical Graffiti. So a plane was uh, was flying overhead during the recording and they get in kind of an argument, or not an argument, a discussion on whether they should edit the plane out of it, <laughs> the track or not. And they just say, eventually, no, I'll just leave it. So they left that in. Uh, the police is Roxanne. Let's see, what is... Oh, yeah, where Sting falls on the keyboard. But listen to this. Right there. Like the little dissonant falling on the keyboard thing. They didn't have to leave that in. It's there. It's like a little nugget. And honestly, I didn't even... I don't think I ever noticed it, really, until it was pointed out by this article. I've heard that song my whole life, and I guess I've just never noticed it. There was probably always someone talking on the radio over that part. That's why. Uh, also, Wish You Were Here. Uh, talks about David Gilmore. A little cough and a breath right before the main guitar part comes in. Also, the, f the thing about that, that's the sound of that guitar when it comes in, too. It sounds really real. You know what I mean? It sounds like off the cuff, like they just recorded it in the... Um, in, in the booth or something you know what I mean it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like they spent any time trying to optimize the you know the mics or any any of that kind of stuff like they just kind of just recorded it off the cuff and the way it came out is the way it came out and it it really sounds immediate and real because of it you know what I mean if you listen to that track wish you were here it just sounds like that it, it sounds real you know it's not even mixed that well like the that little lead guitar part is so much louder than the than the rhythm guitar behind it, you know, but it just gives it this quality, like immediate kind of a quality. And you just don't get that with something that's so overproduced. And everything it seems like now is so overproduced, you can't escape it. And it just, uh, you know, it just kind of ruins everything. But that, that's why I like this article, because it just talks about these little mistakes, these little nuggets that you can find in these old songs. It talks about uh, the Mamas and the Papas, I Saw Her Again. Uh, talks about uh, the Kingsman, Louie Louie. If you listen at the 54 second mark, there's actually somebody saying the word fuck. Let's listen to that. What is it, the 54 second? Okay, let's listen to that. Bah! Like in the background. So that's interesting. I'd, I guess I'd never noticed that before either, really. I'd heard that sound. Um, but I never associated it with the word fuck. It, I guess I just thought it was somebody going, yeah, or something. But yeah, oh, one I will give you that's not on this list. If you listen to, uh, there's an ELO song, Rock Aria. So right at the beginning of this song, <coughs> she chokes, kind of like I just did there. It's, 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 it's cool because it's like even opera singers fuck up. You know what I mean? You don't really often associate classical musicians or, you know, opera singers and that's that ilk to really mess up that often, but she does, like, right off the bat, too, so. Oh, they edited it out of the official video. That's interesting, but if you listen to the album version, let's see if we can find the album version. There it is. One more time. Oops. But yeah, there's there are these kind of little nuggets all over classic rock, all over classic pop music, um, you know, classic AM radio stuff, stuff definitely going back to the 60s and 50s, you know, that far back. They would leave all kinds of stuff in because the recording process was so arduous that uh, and so expensive that, you know, all kinds of mistakes are left in that kind of... And that is why I, I, I can't... I can't drive this home enough. That's why I think all that old stuff... 
sounds so great and is so compelling like and, and it's so timeless even today because they set mics up in front of great musicians and they just let them play you know they let them play through the song and work it out do do five or ten takes and they pick the best one and that's the track they use you know I mean more often than not and it's just like they got some real um, brilliant stuff you know doing it that way and I I don't think the musicians of our generation are of the caliber they could do that really first of all maybe some are but second of all it's just I, I, I don't think the record companies or anyone else who invests money to actually make a mainstream record they're not gonna leave they're not gonna let an artist go in and just record with Steve Albini or something you know I mean they're, they're, not, they're not gonna do that that's not gonna happen again I don't think and that's really sad and I think it's to the to the detriment of music as a whole all right well that will do it for the news <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching this Ship Post Friday. I know it's a little bit of a short one, but uh, it had to be because I'm really late. I actually, I did not start this Ship Post Friday until about 1.30 a.m. on Friday. So I got to get this edited and get it up. If you enjoyed this one, hit subscribe, and we'll see you all later.